Hi everybody. Uh, I figured today it's been a while since I posted, so I figured we covered bicuspid aortic valves. Those are um, one of the most common congenital heart defects that you can pick up uh, as a you know as as it's a ch or if it's a child or even when it's an adult. Um, sometimes they present with aortic stenosis because of a bicuspid valve. So. Thought I'd uh, put some pictures together and show you exactly how it works. Okay, so I drew a picture of an aortic valve. Um, this would be in a short axis, so you would obviously have the pulmonary artery in the right atrium. And then the left atrium is here, and then the pulmonary arteries come down. There's your short axis view. And... Um, what you see here is the cusps, and they're labeled. So this one is obviously right. Sorry, pen doesn't work great. And um, then uh, we have the left coronary cusp, which is here. That's the left. And the non coronary cusp. And obviously, the reason why it's the non coronary cusp is because there's no coronary that comes off of there. Now, the coronaries usually come off about here and about here. So, roughly in those areas. And uh, there's the left main here, and that splits into the circumplex and the LAD. <clears throat> so this is a basic drawing of a normal valve. So you know, sorry for the terrible drawing, but I did my best. Okay, when you have a bicuspid aortic valve, obviously a tricuspid aortic valve means three leaflets. A bicuspid means two leaflets. Now, if you're looking at an aortic valve, And you're supposed to have three leaflets, but you see when the valve opens, it only has two leaflets. Now this, um, the origin of the bicuspid valve can, you know, like right here, it's up top and at the bottom. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I've seen it in just about every form in every possible way. Um, it can, you know, uh, let me erase some of this can look like Pac-Man coming at you. Obviously there's an opening right dead center in the middle. It can also have an opening like this. It just depends upon what that person has. So um, the opening where it's at it doesn't really dictate how severe the disease will be. Um, it's just a matter of how the body you know, didn't split the aortic valve into three cusps. It, it usually means two of the cusps are fused. So what you see in a case like that is you may see a little line there or a little darkening of the uh, cusps where the valve leaflets are fused together and they didn't separate and you end up with a valve that looks like this. Now Obviously, the problem that usually occurs after time you know, depends upon each patient is that valve starts to thicken and it gets little nodules on it sometimes and and the more thick it gets, the more likely you're going to have stenosis. And if the stenosis gets bad enough, obviously you're going to need a valve replacement. So, I have seen people present at uh, 60, I've seen people present at 9 with bicuspid aortic valves that needed surgical repair. So, you can also have um, aortic insufficiency, so you can have a leaky valve too. Um, if that's the case, if it's causing LV dilatation, then obviously you've got a problem. Um, so, either one can cause um, the valve to be replaced. So here's a picture of what I kind of just drew, and you can see the differences between... Now these valves are closed, so 
you can see the difference between um, a normal aortic valve, which is obviously here. And you can see all three leaflets look like they're open, and when the systole, when systole occurs, they open fully. And here is what I drew before. You can see how those leaflets are fused right there. And the only part of the valve that opens is this part here. So, obviously that would be called the bicuspid aortic valve. And again, down here you can see where maybe you might have an insufficient jet, or you might have stenosis going really fast and causing problems. So, um, this is it drawn out in a much neater form than I could do. And uh, here's another drawing showing a normal valve up on top. You can see that right here. And uh, you can see the leaflets very nicely. And uh, down here on the bottom, as I told you, that you can have a bicuspid valve that is in almost any position. And uh, here it is up and down instead of side to side. So um, it doesn't usually matter which way it's going. Most valves stenos stenot or become stenotic based on the patient, not based on anything else. So, um, you know, if this the bicuspid valve is looking like it's getting thickened and the child is only four, then, you know, it may not be too long before they have to have a valve replacement. And that's obviously not something you want to do for a young child, but um, it does happen. A lot of times what we see is they wait um, until it gets pretty bad where the LV, hopefully you don't get to the point where the LV starts to dilate, but um, when it gets to the point where you know, you're starting to see symptoms, and then that's when you want to replace the valve. You don't want to wait until the patient goes into failure. That's a bad thing. Okay, here's another shot. This would be if you were looking straight down from the aorta into the aortic valve. Um, and you can see how there's quite a bit of thickening of the valve. Sorry, I hit the wrong button there. And... Uh, the thickening is, you know, right here where it never opened. And then the valve itself is not terribly thickened yet, but with time it will be. And then you can see the coronary coronaries coming in here. I'm not sure which one is each, uh, or which one is what, but that's the coronaries. And uh, just another way of looking at the valve. Um, Okay, everybody at once. Ew! So this is a pathology um, cut, obviously, of the aortic valve. And here you can see two distinct leaflets. Obviously, there's one here. Um, you can see the very little bit of an opening there. And here's the other one. Um, and you can also see how thickened and kind of bumpy they are. They're filled with junk. This looks like a blood clot to me, but I'm not sure. Um, and uh, when those things happen, when it gets thickened like that, the valve just can't open well. And uh, the patient can present with shortness of breath, chest pain, a lot of different things. Um, this is also a precursor sometimes to sudden death, which is not good. And uh, the pathology shows it, you know, how thickened this valve actually has gotten. So we'll go on to the next. Okay, so I found a kind of a nice picture here that shows you how many different ways the aortic valve can be bicuspid. And you can see that there's six listed up here, but I'm sure you could always find an exception to those, too. Um, they're called Raffi. Um, which is, uh, I think, a famous doctor, but I can't remember for sure. And they label them LCC, RCC, so it's left corner A cusp, right corner A cusp. So that's the two that are fused. And uh, here's the second one is right corner A cusp, non corner A cusp, which you can see here. Here's um, the what looks like the non corner A cusp and the right corner A cusp, and those are. Fused, and I just drew a smiley face. Um, and 3A shows the left coronary and the non coronary. So, non coronary, left coronary, and then you have type 
3B, type 2B, type 1B, which are all variants of that. Um, sometimes it's in, you don't even see where there was a fusion of leaflets. It's just you just have two leaflets. So that's a really a true um, congenital defect where you have no you know there's no distinction between the leaflets. It's just two leaflets. Um, down here you see an echo. This looks like a three leaflet valve so it's normal like this drawing over here. So go on to the next one. Okay let's make this the last picture. I just wanted to show you how a thickened aortic valve and uh, how you get these little tiny bumps all over the place and that's the tissue becoming thicker and thicker. Um, obviously here's the ridge that is fusing the leaflets together right here and um, this is kind of upside down but you'd have this would be the right and this would be the left right? at least I think so and then the non would be here but you can see how the edge of the leaflets is also becoming very thickened that means that this is the only opening right here in the center of the valve should probably have used another color sorry folks um, so that will limit the amount of blood flow coming out and obviously make it very hard for the heart to push the adequate amount of blood out to keep someone well let's say conscious um, and a few other things um, a lot of patients with aortic stenosis I always tell them or always have told them that uh, when you get up from laying down you have to sit for a count of ten before you go ahead and stand up because patients who have severe aortic stenosis who get up from bed and try to walk right away have a tendency to pass out so obviously not a good thing. Well I hope you enjoyed this one on bicuspid aortic valve. I hope it was helpful and uh, we'll see you on the next one.